specialized stereoscopic camera equipment on a technical survey dive in today's episode on the Dive Saga channel. Today we are counting fish for science. If you're already a fan of the Dive Saga channel and perhaps you're even subscribed, then you know that I'm an avid technical diver. But technical diving isn't just about going deep. Technical diving can be very useful because it can lend access to areas that are either more challenging to reach or more challenging to spend a prolonged amount of time. It is for exactly that reason that I received a phone call from James. James is a marine ecologist and needs access to deeper water for an extended amount of time. It may seem odd to do something as trivial as counting fish. After all, there are billions and billions of fish in the ocean. However, for scientists, these counts provide really, really useful data to study the state and the health of the reefs and fish populations in certain areas over time at certain depths. Now, marine ecologist James is also testing a theory. There's a theory in marine ecology called the, called the deep reef refugia hypothesis. And this posits that uh, as you go deeper on the reef, there are less disturbances that are going to affect the deeper sections. To figure out whether this theory is correct or not, scientists need to analyze fish population data in certain locations over periods of time, both shallow and deep. The deep fish survey is where we come in. My dive buddy Jose and myself will be conducting transect line surveys at 40 meters or 130 feet to collect the data for James. To collect this data, we won't actually be counting fish manually, as it would take far too long. For the data collection, James uses what's known as a stereoscopic camera. This is a SVS system, it stands for stereo video uh, system. It works like your eyes, so what we can do with it is we can work out the size and the abundance of the different fish that we find on the reefs around Utila. So using uh, both cameras we can get the uh, perspective from two different angles and that allows us and some very smart software to determine the size of fish and then from the size of fish we can work out the biomass so like the weight of the fish and then from that we can go through past data sets and compare how fish communities and fish biomass has changed over time. The stereoscopic video system is essentially a custom-made rig with two GoPro cameras in waterproof housings under a very specific angle. When run simultaneously, these cameras record an ever so slightly different perspective, allowing software to perceive depth and calculate the size of different fish. So long as these recordings are made at specific dive sites and specific depths, over time they will paint a picture of the change or stability of life on that dive site. To make sure the sample sizes are identical every time, we use what's called a transect line, to ensure that the same distance is covered on every single survey dive. For ease, safety and a sense of direction, we have decided to add a spare tech computer and a compass to the base of the rig. We will be laying three transect lines of 50 meters, 165 feet each, which takes about four minutes to do at a steady pace. We then recover those lines at about the same pace, which means we spend about 25 minutes at depth. We're using air as our bottom gas and we're also bringing 90% oxygen as a decompression gas. Now, if you're already into technical diving, you may be wondering why we're not also bringing, for instance, a 50% nitrox to decompress on as well. 
However, we want to keep it simple and the 90% oxygen already reduces our decompression time from 80 minutes to just 30 minutes. On top of that, we actually prefer to take an extra cylinder that just contains air. That way we ensure that we definitely have an extra gas supply in case the mission requires just a little bit more time. Missions are secondary to survival, but we do want to get the job done. We choose to carry a maximum of two cylinders each besides our doubles to keep it simple and avoid clutter since we are already carrying mission-specific materials such as the stereoscopic camera, weights and measuring tapes. Simplicity helps avoid mistakes. When we arrive at the dive site, the cameras need to be turned on individually before closing the housing. We then enter the water and do our safety checks. Once we reach depth at the correct dive site, the next step is to synchronize the two cameras. We do this by flashing a dive light at the cameras. James can then identify these flashes on both data streams and sync them together. The next step is to lay out the transect line. Timing is sensitive because every breath at 40 meters, 130 feet, is as dense as five breaths at the surface, and every minute of wasted gas and time also adds time to the decompression schedule. Deploying a transect line is a common practice on survey dives. The tape does not harm any organisms on the bottom and will of course be retrieved at the end of the dive so as not to leave clutter behind. Taking the stereoscopic video footage is actually the easy part. We swim along the bottom at a steady pace. When we've swam our three transect lines, we turn around and reel in the line. Every one of the three transect swims took about four minutes, with a minute in between to re-sync the cameras. That means 15 minutes of bottom time are already spent and the next 10 minutes will be used to get back to our starting point and start decompression. I know it may seem trivial to just spend 20 minutes of bottom time and it's pretty tight, but even those 25 minutes require 30 minutes of decompression time. And those 30 minutes have to be executed precisely while carrying all the survey equipment as well. If you want to learn more about technical diving, you should consider subscribing to this channel or checking out some of the videos that we've already made about technical diving, which I will link below. In a nutshell, we are decompressing on air for 1 minute at 21 meters 70 feet, followed by 1 minute at 18 meters 60 feet and 1 minute at 15 meters 50 feet. Then 5 minutes at 12 meters 40 feet, followed by 6 minutes at 9 meters or 30 feet. And finally, we switch to our 90% oxygen for a 16 minute stop at 6 meters or 20 feet. During the 30 minutes or so of decompression for each dive, we have some time to look at wildlife. On one of the dives, I notice a big salp. A salp is a barrel-shaped planktonic tunicate, essentially a colony of organisms that move through the water by way of pumping water through their body. In essence, jet propulsion. Kind of cool if you think about it. On the final moments of our last decompression stop, we get a surprise visit. Cookies and Cream is a leucistic nurse shark. Leucism is a skin condition that results in the partial loss of pigmentation. It's a rare condition, making Cookies and Cream something of a local celebrity around here. What an amazing reward from Mother Nature for all the hard conservation work.